I was born in Malate, Manila, but I could hardly recall a single day of my childhood days there in Manila. I was practically raised in the town of Malilihan here in Bohol, and when I was still a boy, together with my siblings, we would usually go up to the hill at the back of our house and uh, take a palm from, from one of the trees and then ride there down the slope. It was really very, very exciting. And uh, in my elementary days, we were just little children roaming around. We, we had our own garden in the other block of the elementary training department of the Weinberg College. My parents have always been my role model in the public service career. My dad, I remember him, he had his very, very strong passion to be with people. He was the leader in, in, in the real sense of the word. My mom was the compass, which provided strong values and strong foundations also for Christian faith. President Carlos P. Garcia was the person I have always idolized. And I had a rare opportunity of holding his hand during one of his visits when I was still a boy in my hometown. I would also uh, take that as a reason why I did not have second thoughts when I was asked to lead the President Carlos B. Garcia Foundation. His life and his writings and his humility as a person with strong convictions and uh, very, very articulate and uh, uh, a person, a, a man who really inspires not only the Boholanos but the Filipinos. So I think President Garcia is the man I would consider as a role model. My leadership skills as a person was honed when I involved myself in uh, campus organizations. And the first one was the campus ministry, Student Catholic Action, where we have to preside over cell meetings alternately among our members. But the group inspired me to move towards community involvement. And when my father practically asked me to run for presidency of the Kabataan Barangay, now the SK, I had no reservations doing it. Lord, teach us to be generous, to serve as we deserve to be served, to give without counting the cost, to fight without counting the wounds, to work without seeking rest, and to spend my life without expecting anything in return than the knowledge that I'm doing it in your holy will. The SCA prayer gave me the strength every time I move on to new challenges. When I was two years old, uh, I was sick, my mom told me, and that affected also my uh, right leg. It was a polio, and uh, I think the positive side there is I have a very, very soft heart for helping the disabled. My projects for the disabled, uh, together with the non-government organizations, are, are things that has influenced positively the, the lives of, of these disabled persons. So they have adopted me as their brother. I remember that even in my younger days, when I go to the governor's mansion, because my dad told me that we have to visit an uncle who was then the governor of Bohol, it was really exciting moments because to me, the mansion was a big, big house, it was a symbol of power and authority. And I was just so lucky to be among those invited to see the governor. My dream when I was finishing college, was to become a lawyer and with specific obsession of becoming a corporate lawyer. That was my dream. But uh, there are many other ways I think that God would put us in situations where our own plans may not necessarily be what he is also planning about. Just a car accident changed everything. When I was about to resign from my position as a provincial board member, my resignation letter was already in my attache case, ready for submission to the Governor of Bohol, Governor Bukhalid. When the 
car accident uh, almost killed me and crippled me many, uh, for a couple of months, I wasn't able to submit my resignation letter. And I ended up coming back to Mughal, continuously serving as provincial board member representing the youth sector, enrolling in the College of Law at Holy Name University. My professor then was telling me, especially Dean Suping Tinampai in the College of Law, that I should not be in politics and also in law school at the same time. Uh, you should have only one, you cannot have both. My decision to run for mayor in Balulian was influenced by the pressure of the political group in my hometown led by my father. And I was still in fourth year law school then. So that was my greatest challenge. Uh, taking the bar at the same time I was mayor of Balilina. And I said, I will try to prove to myself and to my dean that if we just budget our time, work and pray, we can have both actually. And I passed the bar in the same year. It was difficult because I did not know the leaders and I was just there because I was the son of my father. But after I won that election, I have to prove to people that I was my own man. So many things can be done actually by a congressman. And that was my realization. Congress can be a strong opportunity to even serve more. It's easier for us to get resources for our own districts and for the province. I think the law that took a lot of my time and also I think is closest to my heart was the Tourism Act of 2009. And this is the guide for tourism development in the country. And I was also passionate about it because I was part of the team before, which also crafted the vision of Bohol. And we said we wanted Bohol to become a prime agricultural tourism destination, a balanced agro-industrial province. So when I introduced provisions in the Tourism Act of 2009, I always had Bohol in mind. Every time I inputted some ideas there, our province is, has been my inspiration in that tourism act of 2009. Corruption is one of the major causes of difficulty in the Philippines and in many other developing countries. In fact, it is also being attributed to the problem of poverty. I joined about seven of us, congressmen, who initiated on coming up with an anti-red tape act which we hoped can be implemented well. This particular law was envisioned to avoid delays in government transactions and to avoid also opportunities for corruption. My family, a small one indeed, because we have only one daughter. We uh, spent time uh, moving around in malls and in movie houses and also in restaurants. My wife has a business of, of her own and she also runs a review center for nurses. And my daughter is a very diligent student. Incidentally, she's studying in Ateneo. And so we are far apart from each other now that I'm here. We look forward to uh, weekends where we can be together. We are very, very uh, conscious of the fact that in public service, so many other people take our own time. We have, of course, to treasure our own special moments together as well. My vision for this province is to be one of the best provinces in the country. Our niche has already been identified 10 years, 15 years ago and that's to become a prime agricultural tourism destination. I would really love to see Bohol move on in that particular direction. We must not put agriculture as just a second uh, of second importance, but rather we should take our strength in agriculture and be the food basket, not only of Region 7, but of the country as a whole. I will be very, very careful about leading our people and steering also governance into achieving the visions of development for Bohol.
without sacrificing the environment of the province. Tourism industry can bring in direct benefits to the communities, to the countryside, to the poor in terms of job creation and livelihood uh, opportunities. We have to uh, support the micro enterprises. We have to uh, generate more income for our farmers and for our uh, industry players in, in the countryside so that the out-migration of Boholanos will be our biggest indicator of real development happening here. Our education sector is uh, strengthened because human resource development is a very important component of the development of Bohol. Uh, these are indicators of development that I would like to see improved. I would like to see addressed, not only by government, but also by our private sector uh, supporting us. I am not afraid of failures because failures actually are just part of the opportunities for success. They become your inspiration to work harder. I remember one writer said, a kite can never fly higher unless it soars against the winds.